Hey everybody, this is Jeffrey once again, Unique Model Creations, bringing another update on the uh, progress of that 148 scale uh, AC-130 Hercules EH model. And uh, here we got it outside here in a nice uh, late afternoon, early evening, got some nice clouds right up over there. Let me tell you, it's beautiful. And um, as you see here, what we've got is this uh, the uh, fuselage right here all primed up now this has been primed once and I'd actually gone and painted it my brother was wanting it to be uh, gunmetal and when I painted it in that gunmetal it was just like way too dark and I pretty much black is what color it was <laughs> um, and it's like you know what this just way too dark the models just not that large and you I kind of wanted to I don't want to feel just you know black and then you have all the lighting and stuff going on with it and it just kind of feel like well you got all this beautiful lighting coming out of this black hole that's sitting there on this large base and um have to start measuring out so i can go and get me a go and get some pieces cut for what this thing is going to sit on so i can start getting it mounted and see how these wires and everything's going to go and uh and uh so we can uh, make some major progress anyhow though uh, so what I did was I went back and got me some the, got me some more primer. I'm trying this right here, first time I've ever used it, and uh, picked this up out of Walmart. It was about four and a half dollars, and I love it. I absolutely love it. Um, you know, this, this is fast drying and it is nice and dry here now. I'm touching it. Just did this maybe a good 15 minutes ago. You know, give it a good rub. Nothing on the finger. Mm, beautiful, beautiful, absolutely beautiful. I love it. So, um, it is a really, really nice looking primer. It, it, oh my goodness, look at that. That is gorgeous. I love it. So, anyway, um, and plus, you know what, this thing really was going to need a couple more uh, coats of primer on it anyway. To assist with the light blocking, this is a, um, dense paint that goes on this primer and I often use it for light blocking and stuff and then I may go back and hit a couple of touch-ups with the uh, black paint before I go through one last time after the model is completely done and then um, you know hit it up with the primer again and then paint it uh, just for that additional light blocking so it was gonna need it anyhow because it is gonna be a lot of lights in the inside of this uh, mainly on the um, on the top up here on the dorsal is going to be you know the lights is going down um as you can see here we've got the hangar bay right here and it is all together it's nice all detailed out it's been like this for quite a while but i've had so much going on um just had a just had a new baby here on oh god what was that uh, august the 28th just got married on august the 26th and um you know i've just had a, quite a bit going on and stuff but you know i thought you know i've it's been slow going it's been real slow going with this model and stuff. So this right here, um, except for the main color, all that detailing up inside of there and stuff, it's been a lot of hand painting, a lot of, um, you know, a lot of, uh, oh, what's that thing called? Magnifying glass work, uh, magnified work going on and stuff there. But as you can see here, you can tell there's going to be, you know, the lighting runs along the um, top spine up there and it goes all along here. There's a piece right here. I'm going to have to drop it down. Actually, maybe uh, not half an inch but at least a quarter just so I'd be able to get them. I'm going to use fiber optics on that part that goes right through here and uh, probably right through here as well. And that's just because these uh, spaces for where the lights are are spaced out a little too much to be able to utilize the um, a light strip that I have, um, not the double density, single density. So, you know, spaced out at a nice, good, um, even spacing, maybe by like an inch or so. But these are just a little too close. So that's going to be fiber optics right there. Have a nice, good, bright white light with um, a metal tubing going around it. So that it's all really forced uh, through those holes and stuff really, really nicely. Uh, no rubber tubing using for that, man. It's going to be metal. That stuff's not moving anywhere. Um, and then, of course, the parts out the back that drops underneath the doors that drop down on the back. You know, that's that's spaced out quite well. So that's going to have the lighting right there. Um, I may have to resist that a little bit so that it matches, but it'll be okay. Uh, now, why I'm having to drop this down a little bit is because um, the way this thing fits in the inside of here, um, it really is a snug fit. Like, it's right up against the top. It's right up against the top. If I were to sit that in there, uh, let me see, go about like that. You can see that is right up against the top. 
right up against the top. So if I left that alone, I wouldn't be able to get anything in there. So I'm having to alter it a little bit so that I can get some lighting up in there because we do want to have a little bit of realistic lighting. A little realistic lighting overhaul going on here. And so that's co that's causing for the changes. So, um, but that's fine. Do what I've got to do so I can get the job done and get it done right. I'm all right with that. So, but that is where we are thus far with this. It really is a fun uh, plane here. I do have the servos uh, so that I can start getting that wired up and find me some programming so that I can learn how to um, you know, drop those doors drop the bay doors the one you know it splits it's about a what would you call it at about a 60 40 maybe a 70 30 split no i'm going to 60 40 um and the bottom half of course lowers the upper half raises and um i'm not sure if that's going to be one button for the whole thing um but i do know that well actually it's probably going to be two buttons one for one and one for the other and stuff so um and then of course is being instructions <laughs> lower it first and then raise the smaller one then lower the smaller one then raise the larger one because it does kind of fit together uh in a certain a certain way in the back side of this and um and plus it's my first time my first time ever ever using it so I, when it's my first time i err on the side of caution as i said this model is going to have a buttload of buttons on it i mean imagine if you've got this plane say this is the um the base is going to be sitting on and let me tell you with a 33 inch wingspan uh it's that maybe more than that actually i think it's about 33 and maybe 36 but you know 33 inch uh, 36 inch wingspan somewhere around up in there and prop that up on there uh you know so you got a wing that comes out roughly to about right there so now imagine the other half and it's coming away you know way over here jeez it's a big plane so it's going to be on a big uh, uh big base i don't want any of it hanging off and stuff so imagine how that thing's going to be packed and shit it's going to be highly interesting, but it's still going to make it. It's going to make it. It's going to make it. Okay. So, um, with all that right there, you know, you're going to have a panel somewhere with your, with your, different, put, with your different buttons on it. I, want, I think I'm going to have the um, propellers. We've seen the props run. Have those on um, rocker switches. And then, you know, like lights and stuff, have those on, on a push button switches. So that's going to be, you know, that'd be all nice and cool. And I'll start ordering up a bunch of them so that they can start going ahead and coming on in so I can see how that's going to go and start getting some wiring done and stuff. I'm just, you know, almost getting so far behind. I'm almost forgetting how to do some of these things that I need to go ahead and pick it up again so that I don't, so I don't lose my touch on how to make this. Because, you know, this is something that uh, it came very uh, near and dear to me as far as uh, everything that was going on in my life at the time when I started building. Um, I was suffering from major depression and uh, extreme anxiety and stuff, and I found this, I found model building, uh, all the community, you know, the major community out there on YouTube, all those model builders from the amateurs to the professionals, and, um, you know, even with just, uh, uh, even with the support of them, you know, you're, you're going through, you're, you're, you're making something, you post a video, and the response that you get, um, you know, let me tell you, it's it was very, very, gratifying very very satisfying and very very inspiring so have to keep it going and you know baby's been born marriage has happened so now it's time for everything to pick back up and um that means this um what it does mean too is that the 1350 enterprise is going to have to be on a back burner um you know, I've got quite a bit of decals done on it. Almost the engineering hull is about completed. Um, it will be slow. I will do some more, and I will kind of get a little short video up just to showcase what I've done thus far and, you know, where I'm at with the stopping point because I do need to get this beast right here completed so it can get out there to Virginia. It's been over a year. I've been working on this thing. I said it's been slow going, but it's time to pick it back up. i got a couple more weeks before I go back to work off paternity, and um, I want to get a bit done. So... Um, going to be some restless nights here. Going to be some long nights. But, um, and I'll tell you though, too, though, this thing is fun. Man, oh my goodness, all this detail that I put up inside of here and everything. You know, some, you know, a little bit added, a little bit added and stuff. Um, I do like the colors and everything. I love, you know, that right there, this, um, flooring right here. Um, I'm trying to remember, graphite is what I used on that. And then I just took with a brush and brushed through with, um, a little bit of rust. Uh, well, not rust, but I think I took a little bit of copper 
and rush it up on there and then I got um man maybe like a thousand grit 800 grit sandpaper and just uh scraped it on there and stuff it just made it look nice and a little old and everything and I do have you know um, aged weathering and stuff where you can see right down through here like things have been dripping down and running down and things kind of rusting out it looks really really cool I like that dirt and grime and you can see right up in there trying to give that a little bit of, of um depth as you look in there you know because you look at it a certain way and it's just gee you're looking at plastic so <laughs> and you know you're looking at plastic it already is a model but i want to have a little touch to it so and of course there are some figures to go with this model as well so it's about four or five of them um to go in there a couple on the outside and then you have the ones that are sitting inside of the cockpit um and um it's just gonna be, you know, utterly amazing, you know, mind blowing. So, um, but that's where we are right about now. I go forth and continue working on this. Those of you out there building models, continue building on them. And uh, if you're not, pick something up. As you can see here, I'm branching off from what I normally do. Usually, it's Federation starships from Star Trek, and um, you know, now it's like, hey, let me do something a little bit more real. This got me liking doing the planes and everything. So, um, but yeah, this is where we at. And I'm not sure when the next video will be. Hopefully it'll be even sooner and stuff. You know, I got some lighting effect in, and uh, one of the wings there. I'm going to show that off just in a little, uh, a little show, a little showcase video there. Um, nothing very bright and elaborate. Uh, so um, I'll keep it and we'll keep it going. We'll keep it rolling a little bit slowly and surely. All right, you guys. Later.